How can we respond in times of great darkness and suffering? How do we face the pains and trials of this life without falling into despair and giving up? When suffering comes, the Blessed Virgin Mary can be a model for us. The following is the Gospel reading for the Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, which contains a key to suffering well. Listen very carefully to what Mary says in this passage. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. What do you hear Mary saying in this passage? What we hear, what is contained in this passage, is the silence of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. But her silence is not one of emptiness. No, her silence is pregnant with meaning. At the Annunciation, her yes to God was so perfect and pure that it echoes continuously throughout the rest of her life and the rest of eternity. It's not that Mary has nothing to say. It's that she's already said it all. Let it be done to me according to your word. The silence of Mary is thundering with the sound of her eternal fiat. Her yes, said once and for all, crescendos throughout all of human history, each moment increasing in intensity. Mary's silence is a deafening yes to the will of God. A yes so powerful that if we let it, it becomes our response as well. One message that Mary teaches us through her silent presence in this gospel passage can be found in the very first word, standing. Standing by the cross of Jesus. Mary watched her son betrayed, arrested, scourged, and humiliated. She's seen the blows tear his flesh, the thorns pierce his scalp, and the nails driven through his hands and his feet. He is bleeding, weak, gasping for air, and crying out in pain. Yet Mary is there at the foot of the cross. And not only is she there, she's standing. At the moment when we expect a mother to be collapsed on the ground, wailing uncontrollably, unable to watch her son's excruciating pain, Mary is standing at the foot of the cross. Mary's posture says so much more than her words could ever say. She is standing at the foot of the cross not because she's unaffected by the anguish of her son's crucifixion, and not because she has some special knowledge as to what this all means. Mary is standing at the foot of the cross because she is a woman of great faith. In the midst of the most intense darkness and trial that any of us could ever imagine, the death of her son, the death of God himself, Mary has the faith to trust in God's plan. She is beat down and devastated and could not possibly imagine how this could all be made right. Yet she trusts that God will find a way. The posture of Mary standing at the foot of the cross teaches us what it means to be people of faith. This image of faith in the darkest times is one that has proven to be incredibly important in the Carmelite charism. What is something that so many of the Carmelite saints have in common? They suffered intensely, yet they found incredible love in the midst of their suffering. We see this reality in Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, Therese of Lisieux, Elizabeth of the Trinity, and Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, just to name a few. St. Teresa faced debilitating illnesses and countless obstacles in creating her convents. Yet her suffering bore the fruit of our entire religious order. St. John was imprisoned and cruelly punished as a rebellious friar by his own religious brothers. Yet his suffering bore the fruit of his rich poetry and spirituality. 
Saint Therese faced the pains of tuberculosis, where she said that each breath felt like she was being stretched out on iron spikes. Yet her suffering bore the fruit of the little way. Likewise, Elizabeth, Teresa Benedicta, and others faced intense suffering, physical, emotional, and spiritual. Yet their love in the midst of their suffering bore the fruit of such a beautiful and profound spiritual patrimony. What is it about their suffering that has drawn millions of people to fall in love with Carmelite spirituality? Our saints are so attractive because they show us that suffering has meaning. The temptation in suffering is to despair, thinking that life has no meaning and that God has abandoned us. Yet our Carmelite saints are shining examples of suffering well. Amid some of the most difficult situations in life, they trusted that God had a plan. A plan that perhaps they could not understand, but a plan nonetheless. A plan that would take all of their pain and all of their sorrow and transform it into love. The reason why this example is so attractive to the world is because we all suffer. Especially in our current times, millions of people suffer from loneliness and depression. The violence, corruption, and addiction so prevalent in the world today are symptoms of a greater problem that we are a world with a tremendous lack of faith, hope, and love. And without these, the suffering that we experience in our lives becomes oppressive and debilitating. Our Carmelite saints, in imitation of Mary standing at the foot of the cross, show us that this doesn't have to be the case. Our suffering too, if encountered in faith, can become the breeding ground of a rich, fertile source of light and love. You see, suffering is like a great vacuum. It bores deep into our hearts and empties them out. All of us face moments of suffering, moments of death, betrayal, hopelessness. We know what this emptiness feels like. It's painful and gut-wrenching. Yet, this is not the end of the story. Suffering empties us out. It clears away our pride, our self-reliance, the busyness and noise, the comforts and the distractions. It clears all of this away and it creates a womb in our hearts. A womb in which the seed of faith is implanted in order to produce incredible fruit. Why is suffering so powerful in the spiritual life? Why has it produced such great saints? Because suffering beats us down to the point where we have no more strength and no other choice but to rely on God. When we are suffering, we become so weak that we can do nothing but cry out to Him. When I am weak, then I am strong. So there's Mary at the foot of the cross, frightened, confused, angry, and completely devastated. This is the moment in her life when she is most weak, yet she is standing. The power of her suffering has emptied out her heart, which then becomes another womb for her to bear Jesus. The first time she bore Jesus physically into the world in Bethlehem. This time she bears Jesus spiritually into the heart of the church. What do we do when we find ourselves faced with the sufferings of our lives, both the big and the small? Do we turn to God in prayer, or do we turn to distractions such as television or social media? Do we run to God in our need, or do we try to numb the pain with addictions such as alcohol or pornography? As Christians, we are called to imitate Mary in our suffering. We are called to stand at the foot of the cross in faith. We are called to allow our suffering to become another womb through which we too bear Jesus into the world. Our Lady of Mount Carmel,
pray for us. Yes.